at the point of the last interview, uh, you being uh, you putting yourself forward to be the candidate of the Gower uh, constituency for Labour Party, and uh, how you felt uh, a little conflicted knowing what uh, Roy Jenkins was intending in the early eighties. You know, like mixed loyalties between uh, your past Labour family and a potentially new one with the SDP. Yeah. Uh, and we also, I think, tied up the. Uh, 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 the, the, the feeling of devastation after the 1979 referendum. Yeah, so right. I think we're looking forward now towards so the new party. And uh, it was uh, now around March 1981. Um, it was becoming, it was clear that March was going to be the date for the launch of the new party, which was launched by Jenkins at the Gang of Four, and uh, in Wales it was launched by uh, Roy and Tom Ellis, because I wasn't at that moment in time, an actual member, because the Gower thing was coming to its final conclusion. In the Gower uh, selection conference, I mentioned the word social democracy. Well, that was a clear hint, wasn't it? And uh, uh, that's that. Uh, Shirley Williams came to speak at Swansea University around the same time, and I spoke with Shirley and said about the uh, the dual situation I was confronted with at the time and she gave me a bit of advice and uh, I pursued that and eventually after say six eight weeks April May time I then joined formally and started being involved with a steering committee they had set up a steering committee and there was a gentleman uh, who was a lawyer in Cardiff Tony Jeremy who effectively organized things for a while and he did a very, very good job. And uh, uh, Tony, you know, I knew he's, his heart was in the right place, particularly on the importance of having a Welsh base to the party. And okay, within us, there was a steering committee which was unelected. Okay, then we had a, a steering committee. Tom wanted one for North Wales. So there was a North Wales committee, South Wales committee. Then we decided, well, we better do some democratic base to all this. So they asked myself and a man from Wrexham, a legal, a legal person again, Eric Owen, to devise a constitution. And uh, that was devised and it was agreed. So then there came a base where we would elect people to a proper STP committee for Wales. Now we had to send all that. The, the constitution, the fact that there was going to be a committee for Wales to London, to Cowley Street, they weren't too happy about it because um, they, they had this vision of a central party. You know, they all came from the Labour Party, didn't they? You know, the same sort of principle. Um, but uh, Tom and I were very strong with the view there's no way we're going to back to those days. This is going to have a federal structure. And luckily, the Scots felt the same and even parts of England felt the same. And the Lib Dems, when it eventually became the Lib Dems, has a federal structure. The STP had a federal structure. We could design our own policies, have our own conferences. And uh, we had a couple of consultative conferences, conferences. You know, to cut a short start because it was, it was a, a hectic time. We had a couple of consultative conferences where Roy Jenkins and Owen and Shirley and those came to. But about just before 1983 general election, we decided, right, we're going to have votes. This conference is no longer going to be consultative. It's going to be a policy-making conference. Now, we met great opposition there because uh, I remember telling David Owen that we were having this conference and we'll be voting. And he looked at me and he said, voting? Yes, we're going to have votes. Because uh, there's no point with having a consultation conference. You know, these people in Wales work hard, three, four hundred people in a conference. And it was very exciting days. You know, the growth in the party was phenomenal. You know, we've only got to look at the opinion polls at the time. Uh, before the Falklands War, the SCP was at 51%. It was winning by elections, winning local government by elections. And I am to this day convinced Maggie Thatcher was third in the opinion polls. And no, I'm a great uh, conspiracy theorist man on all sorts of things. Um, the British establishment has done that throughout the centuries, going back centuries and centuries. The Falklands War need not have happened. 
but it was the war that saved Mrs. Thatcher. And it sunk us. Not only did she sink the Balaclado, she, she also sunk the STP in a way. Because from 51% of the opinion polls, we came down now to being a normal third party. 20%, 25%, still doing well. But the big threat had gone. And Labour, I suppose, were also relieved about that. Even though we did terrible damage to Labour for the best part of eight years. The 83 election and the 87 election. Um, you know, we stopped Labour in his trucks. And uh, I claim to this day again that Labour only changed eventually because the SDP and the Liberal Democrats made it change. Because we made it a moderate Labour Party. Because they could not carry on with the kamikaze left wing approach in the mid 80s when there was a moderate alternative of no senior Labour politicians who was presenting a far more coherent, middle-of-the-way, moderate approach. So Labour realised, and Kinnock realised, that's why he changed. He didn't change for the love of it. You know, he could not change from being anti-NATO, anti-nuclear, anti-Europe, anti-anything you can imagine, anti-the House of Lords. This was Neil Kinnock. Eventually, and sorted out the militants and he was the original militant long before uh, Derek Hatton and the other people and the, the Liverpool militants Neil was the militant of the 70s and he had his own gang of people in Wales who were with him one or two of them ended up in the in the, in the Welsh Assembly eventually and became ministers and behaved in a totally different way then and he eventually learned and he changed gradually so, where did he end up? In Europe, commissioner. Not only himself, also his children ended up with senior jobs there. Who else ended up there? His wife ended up there. Where did both of them, where are both of them now? In the House of Lords? You know, it's farcical. It is farcical that people give credit to this guy for anything. But he didn't do it. He, they had to do it. The SDP forced them to do it. Otherwise, they would have been annihilated. Because our our original role, I used to say it in speeches, was to I used to say it in speeches. Our job was to replace Labour, defeat the Tories, and be in government. That was my slogan all the time: replace Labour, defeat the Tories, and be in government.